Thank you, John. That's a lot to live up to. <laughs> How many of you have ever seen a mind reading show performed before? Just a couple of you. How many of you have never seen a mind reading show? That's a much better number. Okay. How many of you uh, believe in psychic phenomena? Good. And, and, and uh, how many of you think that it's a crock? <laughs> it pissed me off right away. <laughs> no, that's okay. Tonight and uh, today is really not about trying to prove anything to you. Uh, we're really here to have some fun, to uh, maybe open your minds a little bit, and to uh, share some, uh, some of what might be possible that we don't necessarily realize is possible. So if you happen to be a skeptic, if you're somebody who... Uh, doesn't believe in psychics, that's okay, because guess what? I'm not psychic. <laughs> uh, I once had a psychic girlfriend. Well, I almost had a psychic girlfriend, but she broke up with me before we met. Uh, <laughs> everything you're going to see today comes from a lot of practice in the art of observation and an understanding of human nature from 30 years of meditation and wisdom training. Uh, so there's nothing that I'm going to do for you here today that you couldn't do yourself with 30 years of practice. <laughs> so let's get started right away and uh, see where we go. Uh, one other thing, I, you know, regardless of what you think this is or what you think that it is that I do or don't do, um, my purpose in being here is to leave you better than I found you, to give you a sense of hope and optimism and to empower you to make your lives and, and the world a better place. So uh, think of me as the, the Tom Hanks of mentalists. Um, one final thought, and that is manage your expectations. Uh, if I could consistently predict the future, uh, I'd have a closet full of cryptocurrency, and I'd have known not to invest $50,000 in becoming a realtor during the height of COVID, <laughs> and not to print hundreds of books on the topic uh, that uh, I actually brought a few of these with me, and, and, and I'm going to pass a few of these out. These are some of my real estate books, and I give them out for a very specific reason. So I'll give one to you, and I'll give one to you, and here, Sarah, I'll throw one to you. There we go, and I'll give a couple more of them out. And I give this to you for a couple reasons, because this is an object lesson in a couple of points. No effort is ever wasted. Failure is never final, and regardless, you can always repurpose the fruits of your misguided labor into something of value. So if you happen to be discouraged, or you're feeling defeated in life or anything of that sort, I always do this because I like to remind you that through, regardless of where you're at, any defeat contains within it the seeds of success. So thus ends my real estate retirement party. <laughs> and let's go ahead and get started. Now I did ask, um, was it Judy? Jane, I'm sorry, Jane, if you would shuffle up the cards and you did that for me? Numerous times. Numerous times, so they're not back in order? Yes. Oh, yes? <laughs> would that be a great trick? Okay, Jane, what I'm going to do is, oh, before I do this, uh, I always like to start with a little survey or kind of a little uh, test that helps me to gauge the crowd. Uh, let's try something. Everybody take one hand, put it out alongside of you just like that. Good. Pull back three fingers so you're making the sign of a gun. Touch the tip of your first finger to your thumb so you have a circle. Look at your circle. Look at my circle. Put it right on your chin and freeze. And look how few of you know where your chin is. <laughs> so you just showed me exactly what I needed to see. And uh, that is, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought. No, you're just showing me we're going to have a great time, so give yourselves a great big hand. Thank you. What I'm going to share with you today is half of a show that I've been performing uh, around Vermont. I'm going to be doing a show tomorrow night in Brattleboro, and I've already done it a few times in Burlington. The show is called Mind Magic, and it's woven in with various principles and, and uh, what I think is humor, wisdom, and some ahas. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to do about half of the show for you. So the show runs about uh, 80 minutes, 80 to 90 minutes. I'll do about half of it, leave enough time for some questions and answers, and uh, see if we can create an experience together. How does that sound? Excellent. Uh, so Jane, you shuffle these cards for me. Uh, would you mind coming on up over here for me? 
Yep. <laughs> and have a right over here. Give it up for Jane. There you go. I knew you had that theatrical thing going. That's going to be helpful. Now, Jane, shuffle these cards up. Uh, what we're going to do is um, a little mind reading effect. So the, the, the things that are necessary for me to do what I do, there are a lot of different skills, not the least of which is the ability to read or interpret subtle cues. So I want to try to interpret some of your subtle cues as a warm up, just like an athlete warming up. So we'll see how this plays out. And uh, you've already shuffled these up pretty thoroughly. I'm going to just go ahead and ask you to look at one of these cards. So this isn't a pick a card trick, just a quick glimpse of any cards. They stop any time and I'll turn my head away because I've seen this before. Say stop. Stop. Got one? You've memorized one card in the deck. It could have been any card at all. Okay. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do, Jane, is to just concentrate on your card and to not respond to me in any kind of verbal manner. This is going to be purely nonverbal communication. And we're going to see how well we could get with nonverbal communication. So, Jane, you're thinking of a card right now, uh, and um, the card you're thinking of is either a red card or a black card, yes? So we're. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We use what's called, bi you know what binary means? It's either this or that, right? And so when you start doing mentalism, this, the, the sort that I'm doing, we start out with these binary choices and we narrow it down. And we all do it without realizing it. So I know that your card is either red or black and I'm asking you not to respond to me in any verbal way or any, any conscious way whatsoever. So your card is red or black and now, okay. So, so Jane has a red card. And that's a yes. <laughs> and so that's narrowed it down just a little bit. Now we still have to narrow it farther, quite a bit farther. So now that we know it's a red card, we know it's either a heart or a diamond. Heart or diamond? Heart. Yes? OK. OK. So we're looking for a heart. Uh, it could either be a number card or a picture card. Now here, we could all do this together. Jane, would you just turn facing the audience? There you go. And, and, and I'm picking up on muscle tension also, so I... <laughs> there you go, a little bit of that. <laughs> there you go. Okay, that felt good, right? That's, it was worth it, right. Okay, so we know it's a number card or a picture card, and now I know from your shoulder that it's a number card. Now you might want to be looking at her eyes because the eyes are the windows of the soul. So what you're looking for are any uh, giveaways, any what the gamblers call tells, right? We know it's a number card. We know it's a heart. We don't know if it's odd or even. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it's an even, it's an even heart. <laughs> you see that her forehead is like, she's beginning to melt down. Okay, so we have an even heart, so it, and, and I'll step away a little bit so you could get an unobstructed view of Jane's eyes, and we know that the card is either, and it's an even heart, it is a, it's a number, it's not a picture, and it's either high or low. Now, I know what it is, but do any of you, did anybody pick up on something that happened in her left eye? That might, what, what did you get? She blinked down. Yeah, she blinked down, that's how we know that it's a low, even heart. You're good at this. <laughs> so that means I'm just going to pick up on some muscle tension one more time. Now, if you're really observant, you might be able to pick on a little bit of this as well. So uh, her card is either a two or a four of hearts, because those are the two lower numbers, two or four. Uh, two or four. I'm going to, OK, I'm not going to even tell you what I think it is. See if you, any of you picked up on what it was. Uh, raise your hand if you think it's a two. Raise your hand if you think it's a four. You got a lot of people thinking four. And it is the four of hearts, am I right? Give her a great big hand. Okay, we're still in the warm-up phases here, so. Uh, Oh, thank you. Thanks, Will. You were, I, I'm glad I chose you. You've got, I'll tell you a few things about you. First of all, you've got an expressive face. Uh, you, you're, you've got an open heart, which is lovely. You've got a you know, beautiful soul. And you've got very light blue eyes, which make it really nice to see pupillary responses, <laughs> which is great for me. And I, uh, 
I, 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 that worked out great. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something similar over here, and it's Linda, yes? And you've got great eyes, too. This, is be, this will be perfect. Linda, I'm going to flip through the cards like that. Again, I'll turn my head away. Again, you just stop me anywhere, okay? So just say stop anytime. Stop. You see that one card? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you want to change your mind? No. You're happy with the mind you have? No. Okay, good. <laughs> now, you could have literally picked any of the cards in this deck. I'm going to put the cards down over here. I'm just going to ask you to just give me the first name of somebody important in your life. Now, I'm going to see if I could pick up on what that could be. Or, have you got somebody in mind already? Is this a grandchild? Okay. Who's the person you're thinking of right now? Well, oh, you can mail it in, but yeah. <laughs> what is it? Daughter. Your daughter. Oh, what's her name? Catherine. Catherine. Is that it with a K or a C? K. So it's K A T H E R I N E. Is there any way I could have known you were going to say Catherine? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take the cards and I'm going to spell the name Catherine with the cards. Okay, just like this. So K A T H E E R I N E. Yep. Okay. Now, if that's your card, that would be kind of pretty, pretty cool, right? What, what, what was the card you looked at a moment ago? Tell me, yep. Five of diamonds. How amazed will you be if this is the five of diamonds? <laughs> me too, this trick never works. <laughs> it's a good thing you said Catherine. Wow. Still warming up. I'm going to go a step further, and um, actually, why not we do it together right over here? You guys all took the front row. It's so brave of you to be <laughs> participants up front. We love that. And what's your name? May. May. I'm Steve. It's a pleasure. May, I'm going to go ahead. I'll flip through the cards once again. Same concept, same setup. You stop me anytime. Stop. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, rather than give me a name, just give me any number between 1 and 10. Any number between 1 and 10. I'll leave the cards over here. Two, okay. So here we go, one, two. If that's your card, that would be a pretty cool trick. Is that your card? No, but it would have been a pretty cool trick. <laughs> okay, so. What was your card? Nine of diamonds. Seriously? It's my lucky day. I always keep a nine of diamonds in my back pocket, right there. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, See? If you always keep one in your pocket, you're always a step ahead. <laughs> so let's say I take the nine of diamonds, I put it back in the deck under your close and watchful eye. Is there any way for me to get it in my pocket now? No, because you're watching the deck too close, right? Makes it very hard to get rid of the whole deck. Thank you. Yes, the rest of the deck went in my pocket. Thank you. I'm almost warmed up. Uh, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask somebody to uh, sort of be a, a, a dealer for me. Would you mind dealing some cards? I'll explain in a second. All I'm going to ask you to do is grab a clump of cards out of here. Now we only need you to take maybe five or six like you were dealing a hand of poker. So anywhere from the middle of the deck, five, six, that's a little more than five or six. Let's not get too greedy. How about, what do you think? Five, six cards? Take a few of these back. That sound feel pretty good? Yep. Okay. Um, if you were dealing a hand of poker, you'd, it would be across the table, but this is a whole room, so you're just going to be kind of dealing one and then dealing another, kind of making your way around the room and deal out those cards. Okay? So, that's the idea. Just make your way around until you're, until you're out of cards. And uh, I, I know I'm making you work pretty hard over there. Okay. Uh, Okay, if you have a card, would you mind standing up for just a moment? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That was pretty good. Six was what we said, about six. It's perfect. <clears throat> Nonverbal communication. My job is to say some words out loud. Your job is not to respond verbally in any way. The words I'm about to say make no sense at all. They're actually for my own uh, 
gathering of information. So this is what I'm gonna say, it makes no sense, I promise you. I read that black high tops are low maintenance, which is odd even if it's true, but I picture a number of counters who won two, three, four arguments over five, six, seven days, and then eight, nine, 10 sterling stakes. Uh, that's all I need. Uh, now, you've got a card in front of you. You all know what your card is? Okay, if I say the name of your card, uh, just hand it back up here and have a seat. And so, um, uh, Ace of Diamonds, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back in this corner, we've got a seven and a five of spades. Am I right? Thank you. You're tough, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, would I be wrong if I were to say that your card is a queen of diamonds? Queen of diamonds. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And we just have two left, and this is where it gets a little tough. I might have to say some of those words again. Red, black, red, black. Ace of hearts, eight of spades. Thank you. And I'm warmed up. I don't know about you. Thank you very much, everyone. In order for me to accomplish what I do up here, what's necessary and has to happen fairly quickly is, is the, the cultivation of rapport. We all know rapport means you know, a sense of being one with another, a feeling of being connected, something we all need and want and without which nothing really works. In life, if we don't have rapport, we can't be educated, we can't learn, we can't be entertained, uh, we can't change our minds. Rapport is such an important thing. Uh, Social scientists tell us that rapport comes from a series of, of, of qualities. Most of them happen automatically, right? Uh, things like uh, being nice to people helps to bring about rapport. Just uh, smiling brings about rapport. Trying to get on the same wavelength with somebody else brings about rapport. So there are a lot of things that I, as a performer, do some consciously, some unconsciously. The question becomes, how am I doing, right? How am I doing in terms of developing rapport? Are we on the same wavelength? And the way that I that find that out is I do a little experiment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of a number between 1 and, uh, let's say between 1 and 50. I'll think of a number between 1 and 50. Your job is to um, see if you could pick up on the number. And if we're in rapport, we might get a few people who's who are picking up on the number that I'm thinking of. Very simple. Uh, so this is going to be a number between 1 and 50. It'll be a very odd number, meaning both digits are odd. Uh, and they're not the same as each other. So it couldn't be 11, because those would be two of the same digits, but it could be 17. You follow? So two odd digits that are different from one another. I'm going to send that out to you. OK. Raise your hand, please, if you just picked up on the number 37. High in the air? OK. Now, if you didn't get 30, and that's about a quarter of you got, got the 37. That's quite good. That's quite good. Uh, before I thought of 37, I did think of one other number, and then I rejected it. Did anybody get 35? And that's more than the rest of you. OK, good. Uh, this is great. So, um, uh, who who are one of the who who got it? You got it. Okay, and you got it. Okay, let's try a little experiment. Elaine, yes. Yes. Okay. Why don't you think of a number between one and a hundred, and just sort of uh, see if you project it out to the audience members. In fact, if you would, you could even stand up and just turn and let it look at everybody quickly. Just kind of look around and sort of. Have you got a number in mind? Sure. Okay. Just look at everybody and everybody look at Elaine for a moment. And what you're doing is you're seeing if you could pick up on the number that Elaine is thinking of. Turn the other way as well so the people on the other side of the room can see you. Good. OK, and then you can sit back down again. Now, if you think you picked up on a number from Elaine, raise your hand. 
Okay, somebody at the back did pick up on a number. What number, now you don't have to say uh, what your number is yet, but w what number did you see? 86. Was your number 86? Okay, did anybody else want to hazard a guess? Yes? 42. 42, was it 42? Mm -hmm. Wasn't 42, wasn't 86? Any third tries? Yes? 47. 47? Was that your number? Was that the number you thought of? You thought of the number 47? You want to hear something really weird? That's my house number. I live at number 47. <laughs> Nicely done. Give her a hand for that. That was beautiful. Now, you are clearly good at this, right? OK, um, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I'm going to, think of, uh, I'm going to think of a number. I'm going to write it down. But this is going to be a bigger one. This is going to be a tougher one, OK? Uh, a three-digit number. So think of a three-digit number. Don't tell me what it is. Now we're going to do this one digit at a time. Think of the first of the three digits. Good. OK, think of the second of the three digits. And the third. OK. All right, now, for the first time, what was the number that you thought of? 343. I'm sorry? 343. It was in 272? No, because I got 343 is what I got. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. There are a lot of different skills. I mentioned rapport as one of the skills that's necessary for this to work, right? And um, life is full of choices. Would you agree with that? We're constantly making choices. And how we choose matters. The choices we make in life matter. I'll tell you a story. I was the official hypnotist for MTV Spring Break. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> And I was performing hypnosis shows in Jamaica and Barbados. And uh, during one of my shows, I decided to try something new, something different. And I took one of my subjects and I said, when you wake up, um, whenever you hear me say the words, thank you very much, you're going to think this was the worst show you've ever seen. And you are aggravated with me. And I said, but when I snap my fingers twice, suddenly you think it's the best show you've ever seen. So if I say, thank you very much, worst show, if I snap twice, best show you've ever seen. Now, I did not choose wisely. I wasn't really being cognizant of this guy's psychological profile. So this is what happened. I said, thank you very much. And this guy got up out of his chair, and he picked up the chair. <laughs> and he started drooling. He was like, Hurr! and he came at me with the chair. It was scary. My hand was in my pocket. I couldn't get it out fast enough to, uh, to snap. So I was like, Finally snapped. He dropped the chair midway through, but he still kept coming, and he jumped on me. And he knocked the microphone into my mouth, and he chipped my tooth right there. So uh, I don't know if he was uh, you know, hypnotized or just had a crush on me, but uh, it, was, it was scary, right? It made me realize you've got to be careful about the choices you make, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a little, uh, a little experience with you. Now, if you're comfortable standing, would you all stand right now just for a moment? Stay right in place. Now, if you're not comfortable standing, sitting is fine. You don't have to. I, I, I could, we could use your arm and you just as a, raising your hand. OK. Um, people in general fall into a variety of categories. One category is some people tend to be um, uh, introverted. Some people tend to be extroverted, right? So, uh, raise your, your right hand if you see yourself as fundamentally introverted. Okay, and left hand if you see yourself as fundamentally extroverted. Okay, now, if you see yourself as introverted, I'm going to have you sit back down again, leaving only the extrovert standing. And I will explain why as we go along. So for me, extroverts are easier to read than introverts. Does that make sense? You, if you think about it, because they express things more outwardly. Now, some people tend to be more analytical some people tend to be more intuitive. Analytical people tend to use thought and data to make decisions. Intuitives go a little bit more by the seat of their pants. Uh, if you see yourself as more analytical, raise your right hand. If you see yourself as more intuitive, raise your left hand. 
Okay, and if, now again, uh, there's nothing good or bad about any of these. They just have to do with, with what, um, the, the sorts of people who I do better with when I read them, right? So, uh, so intuitive people, please stay standing, uh, and analyticals could have a seat. So I work with, uh, I think, uh, no, I think if you had, you know, you, intuitives, so this gentleman here was, you were an intuitive. Yeah, intuitives are up, and analyticals, anybody else, or anybody who is standing is currently intuitive. Okay, now, some people are optimists, some people are pessimists, right? Now, again, nothing wrong with it. I personally am a pessimist, which means I don't know if this trick is going to work. Right? <laughs> but if, if, raise your right hand if you see yourself as an optimist, and raise your left hand if you see yourself as more of a pessimist. You're more, more of a pessimist. Okay, you can sit out of a seat, so we've narrowed it down a little bit. And is everybody else here sort of in the optimistic category? Okay, now, here's an interesting distinction. Some people tend to think things happen randomly. Other people think things happen for a reason. Right? So uh, maybe they're preordained, but certainly for a reason. Uh, and other people, are just, things just happen. So raise your right hand if you're a random, random kind of person. You think things just happen randomly. OK? And, and so yeah, you're the only one. But you could sit down. So we're looking for people who have a sense of that things tend to happen for a reason. All right? And you think things happen for a reason. OK. And the rest of you as well? OK. So now I've got one, two, three, four. Now, speaking of random and, and reason, the most random thing that one can do is to flip a coin. Would you agree with that? OK. So we're just going to flip a coin and see if we can narrow the, the group down further. So uh, we're going to have you call it in the air. Uh, heads, is, uh, heads is right hand, tails is left hand. So put your hand up, heads or tails, hands in the air. Here we go. Go. OK. And so right hand is heads, right? And what do we get here? We got heads. Unfortunately, everybody, every single one of you thought heads. That's interesting. So, so now we're going to have to have you divide yourselves up a little bit. So some of you pick tails, some of you pick heads, because we've got to narrow it down. So uh, who's willing to go with the tails? OK, a couple of people are going to go with tails. And you guys, the four of you, are sticking with heads. OK, that's fine. Here we go. I, I'm going blind by this thing. Uh, what did I get here? Heads again. Heads again. OK, so tails can sit. You had, oh, you, you stayed heads. OK. Now, again, some of you are going to have to pick tails because we're still narrowing it down. So who's going to pick tails? Anybody? OK, you're going to pick tails. Somebody else pick tails? Let's go two and two. One other person do tails. <laughs> well, you're, you can't be two people. You're just one. OK. OK, so one other person pick tails because I'm trying to narrow the group down otherwise. OK, good. There we go. So, so I'm going to have two heads, two tails. OK, here we go. Again, I'm like getting blinded by this. What do we got? Heads again. Heads again. OK, so the tails got to sit down, and now it's just the two of you. OK, one of you is going to have to pick tails. One's going to have to pick heads. What do we got? Heads or tails? Heads or tails? I guess God bless you. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call a, 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 a chivalrous move on your part. <laughs> How do we do here? Tails. Tails. <laughs> hey, are you glad you did? OK, have a seat. As I said, my job is to, is to see if I get people, or I make choices wisely, right? So I, I chose people based on certain psychological criteria, but a little bit of, of randomness as well, right? Now, by the way, who did I hand a book to? I gave books to a, a few of you. Okay, you have a book, you have a book, you have a book. Okay, four of you have books, five of you have books. Okay. Oh, she's sitting on a book. Okay. Would you do me a favor? Would you just turn to the very back page of your book and see if there's anything inscribed back there? Nothing. It's blank. OK. Uh, anything inscribed in the back of, of, of your book? No. Anything inscribed in the back of your book? Who else has a book? You have a book? Anything? Oh, you've got a book. Anything inscribed in the back of your book? Nothing. You have a book, too. Anything inscribed in the back of your book? What does it say? I rest my case. Okay, okay. Where's my prize? <laughs> the book. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, does anybody have a birthday coming up in the near future? Maybe this month or next month? Any birthdays coming? You haven't got a birthday coming, sir. Great. 
Okay, when, when is your birthday? September 27th. Oh, that's coming pretty soon. September 27th. That's, I think I'm performing a show on September 27th also. Yeah, that's great. Could I, could I just ask you to come on up here for just a moment? <laughs> okay, but, but here's what we're going to do. Um, we could um, have you pick a card, um, like just randomly, or like I could say, pick a card or, or give me the name of a card that you like, right? Um, and, and, and that would be one way to do this, right? But I want to do it in a very, in a very fair way, right? So uh, what I want you to do is I want you to just cut these cards anywhere. So just make a cut like so. Okay, beautiful. Just like so. I'm just going to mark that spot for a moment. Uh, there's a book over here. Would you be so kind as to look through that book and... Um, And if you were to tell people what's in that book, it's a date book, yes? And every day of that book has a different card written next to it. Is that true? But if you were to look through, there are various, various, uh, okay, great. Uh, just turn to any page at random and, and read out the card for the date that you're looking at. Okay, the February 24th. If your birthday were February 24th, the objective would be that that would be a card you to pick. Follow it? Okay. Now your birthday is when? 27th. Of September. September 27th. You turn to September 27th. Um, what card would he have picked? Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds. Okay. So you could have literally cut this card anywhere. What card did you? Nice <laughs> job. Okay, thank you for that. One of the questions I get asked quite often, people will say, can you tell when people are lying? I can tell when meteorologists are lying. <laughs> Today's one of those days. Okay, so, uh, but, but as for people in general, there are things that we learn to look for, just like we learn to identify things through these subtle maneuvers. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, ask if I can get a few people to draw some, some doodles, and we're going to try an experiment. So um, here, why don't I go over here. Joyce, would you mind drawing a quick picture for me? Oh, I'm not good. Stick people. Stick people's great. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, don't tell me what you're going to draw, though. Oh, um, did you, did, sir, do you want to draw a little picture for me? Here you go. I have a pen. Uh, what about you? You look like you could do a good drawing. Here's one for you. Um, and let me go over this way. And um, would you mind drawing a picture for me? Sure. There you go. Here's a pen for you. And uh, maybe uh, one other person. Who, would, would you draw a picture for me? Maybe. Yeah, why not? Okay. Don't let me see what you're drawing, but go ahead and draw something quick and simple right now. Just a little doodle. Try to keep it to yourself. Uh, it's not the end of the world if somebody near you sees it, but... I prefer it if you kind of keep this close to the vest. So draw a little bit of a picture. While you're drawing the picture, I wanted to ask the rest of you, if any of you here have ever heard of Clever Hans? Does anybody know that name, Clever Hans? Fascinating story. Back in the 1890s, there was a horse that toured Europe with his owner, and the, ho the owner would ask the horse questions, and the horse would beat out the answer, right? <laughs> and it was fascinating, but people thought, well, maybe it's just sort of a trick. The horse has memorized the answers. They brought the horse into the lab and they asked the horse different questions and different people would ask the horse questions. The horse would still get the questions right. So it was clearly not simply a matter of, of a, a rote answer. What they discovered was that this horse was doing what I did with, uh, with Jane at the beginning. The horse was picking up on subtle cues. And that was called microexpressions. And these microexpressions are fascinating. So, Here's what I want you to do is, uh, would you just gather up those, those five uh, and, and the pens and face down. Just put them face down so we can't see them and who drew them. And once you gather those up, you can put them in any order. I don't want them to be in any specified order. So you can mix them up a little bit as well. Got a couple more over here.
So micro expressions, the idea that there are such subtle things that we're doing without realizing that we're doing them and they, they constitute the, the, the bulk of our communication with each other is subtle. I kind of, face down? Okay, got all the pens, all the pens are capped. Thank you, let's put this over here. And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show these pictures. The five of you who drew pictures, please stand up. We're gonna, we're gonna do a, um, a lie detector test. <laughs> and the way it'll work is I'm gonna show you a picture and I'm gonna say that you draw this. And your job is to say no, even if you drew it. And I'm gonna to try to figure out who's lying. So this first picture is, uh, it's, a, it's a little honeybee. That's, most people would think of that as a very warm, sweet picture, but I've got yellow jackets on my back deck right now that are making my life a living hell, so thanks a load. Uh, did you draw this? 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 Okay, so interestingly, when people are lying, and you ask them a question, if they're going to vocalize or verbalize their answer, they'll usually vocalize or verbalize the answer before they express a nonverbal movement, like the movement of the head. So they'll say no, and then they'll go like this. But if they go like this, and then they say no, that's how you know that you're the one who drew this. <laughs> yes? Okay, and you can have a seat. Okay, now this could be almost anybody in Vermont drew this because this is a kind of a typical Vermont kind of a scene. It's mountains, it's a, it's a tree, it's uh, maybe, a, maybe a river. Uh, did you draw this? Did you draw this? Did you draw this? Did you draw this? Okay, and you really, really, I gotta give you a lot of credit for trying not to move your head, but. <laughs> Okay, now the person who drew this one um, is, is an artist of sorts. This was done by somebody with an artistic temperament. Look how pretty. Isn't that nice? A couple of different flowers. We've got a tulip, we've got maybe a daisy, uh, a few other flowers there, and a little pond maybe underneath that. Did you draw this? Did you draw this? <laughs> that's, that's a reversal of the experience. <laughs> Did you do this? No. And I don't know, to me, me thinks thou doth protest too much. I think you drew this, is that right? Yeah, give it to her. Here you go, let's give this to her as a souvenir. Nicely done, beautiful. Um, I have no idea what. <laughs> I, it, 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 it. <laughs> Is anybody picking anything up from that one? It's like maybe like uh, maybe some kind of bug eating a worm that's coming out of the ground. I don't know. Uh, certainly somebody with uh, with some scientific knowledge or a sense of humor, I guess. Uh, did you draw this? Did you draw this? And you you just found this as funny as I found it. So <laughs> you drew this. Can you share with us what it is? What are, what are we looking at there? Oh, that's a, a deer head mounted. Oh, it's a mounted deer head. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know it. Okay, good. Now, let me see if I can figure out who drew the last one. I don't know. I. Um, you were saying stick people, and I want to see if I could just sort of pick up on some vibes from you. So uh, just look over here, and I'm going to see if I think you drew something. I don't think you drew stick people. I don't, I don't think it was stick people. I think uh, you seem to be a very, are you very family oriented? I'm picking up, I don't know. I don't know, what I, I don't know if this means anything at all, but I'm picking up on what looks like maybe uh, uh, did you put a heart in your picture? Is there a heart in there? Something like that? Something like that? Let's see. Heart and a flower. Thank you.
Okay. So I wanted to I wanted to leave a little time for us to to uh, share and chit chat just a little bit. So uh, what we've done up to this point are uh, a few uh, basic mind reading or thought reading kinds of experiments. Uh, I find them kind of fascinating. They use a lot of different skills and tools. Uh, but I thought maybe we could have a quick discussion and then maybe I'll end with one more thing for you. So anybody have any questions? Okay. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yes? How can you tell if someone's lying? So again, very much like everything else we do, I'm looking for, for uh, various visual references. So I'm looking for sometimes skin tone, often pupillary response. A lot of times I'm looking for twitches. They're called tells. Gamblers use them all the time. Yeah. And, um, and it's important for us to recognize the degree to which we are communicating when we don't know we're communicating. Because we think we said the right thing to somebody and they're still not happy with us. You ever have that experience? They're picking up on nonverbals. And we have to understand that we're constantly uh, sharing and communicating in ways. And that's why in my experience and the work that I do, I try to help people learn what it is to be mindful or present or aware of what's going on inside of them so they're not projecting the wrong thing. And if they've got some stress or some discomfort or they're in disagreement with somebody, that they make peace with themselves before they communicate it outwardly. Yeah. Yeah. Other question? Yes and yes. You first. Do you play cards? Uh, <laughs> if people will let me. <laughs> It doesn't happen very often. I'm actually not much of a card player. I used to play gin rummy with my grandma, but she was better at this than I am, so, uh, so I'd still lose to her. Uh, I like cards, but I'm more fascinated by what cards can do, so I don't play much cards. What about you? Are you a card player? I am. Are you? Are you any good? Yeah. Do you find that you're picking up on cues, like you're noticing things that maybe you're either registering consciously or you're just picking up on a sense or a feeling or something like that? Um, I, I probably should pay more attention to the people around the table, but I'm usually more thinking about the cards that we played and not the people. Okay. And I and after seeing your presentation, yeah. I know I know a lot of tells and what have you. Yeah. Never really focused much about that. Because you were pretty confident in what you were seeing and you're coming coming from an analytical response. And plus you know your yeah. mind plays games and I, I've got some very very good card players who yep. I think send out messages specifically to derail one's emotion of what they have and what they don't have. So, so I, I try and eliminate that completely. Like if I had your skills, I'd yeah. rely on those. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. But you know, you, you know that they're doing something and you just don't want to get, you don't want to have anything to do with that whatsoever. Right. Nice. Right. I want to do it more, I guess, on my own, my own analytical slash intuitive from the, from the cards themselves rather than being misled by somebody's Gameplay, facial gestures. And you're doing pretty well. Uh, yeah, Spike. Okay. Fascinating. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Yes? How did you ever get started in this? What was your motivation to do this? So, I, for many years, uh, I was in healthcare. I, was, uh, I had a chiropractic sports medicine practice for 14 years. And uh, I ran that down in Burlington for quite some time. And then when I decided to, um, to leave chiropractic practice, the thing that fascinated me most was psychology. You know, how we, how we communicate and, and not just with each other but with ourselves and how our self-communication can either enhance our lives or sabotage us. So uh, I, I also, by the way, had a background with theater, so being an actor. And actors are very much interested in motivation. We're interested in how we carry ourselves. We're interested in, in being present rather than just uh, you know, haphazard in our movements. And so that all kind of played into what I started to do. And then uh, I started doing stage hypnosis, which I've mentioned, and uh, found that fascinating because people, um, people will reveal things about themselves in a hypnotic state that they won't reveal otherwise. And then I just started noticing that I could pick up on, on some of these other cues as well. Yeah, thanks. Questions? Okay. Let me, um, I'm, I'm thinking of two different things I might do with you. Uh, one of them is, um, yeah, let's see. Does anybody have a cell phone with them right now? Yeah. Okay. Is there somebody that you could call? Like if you, like if you were to just pick up the phone and call, or is there somebody that might be on, answered on the other end? 
You, you've got somebody who you could think of? Okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and make a phone call. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna play a little visualization game with with whoever calls. So um, first and foremost, let's get rid of that one. Um, and uh, I've got my pencil. Okay. Uh, give somebody a call. No, I don't care. Okay. As long as you get them on the phone. Okay. And then what do I do when I get the phone? Um, stand up. <laughs> stand up. You stand up, man. Okay. Uh, call somebody up and tell them that you're at a show. And now we're going to do an experiment together. And they're on the hot seat, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm going to take some notes. So, the first thing I'm going to ask your friend to do on the other end of the call is to imagine that he or she, or is it he or she? She. she. Have her imagine that she's uh, in college and she's, uh, there are two buildings that are side by side. These are both dorm rooms, dorm, dorm buildings. Yeah, okay, if you have to convey it to her, that's fine. Uh, and one of the buildings is the Farragut building, the other one is the Hillman building, okay? So, which of those buildings does she live in? Which of the buildings do you live in? We're looking for a response. Hillman. Okay, Hillman it is. Okay, I want your friend to imagine that the Hillman building is nine stories high and it's got an elevator and she walks into that elevator and she pushes a button to one of the floors. What floor does she go up to? Four. Good, good, okay. And once she gets off the elevator, um, she can either turn right or left. Okay, now the, built, the, the rooms on the right are the odd numbers, the rooms to the left are the even numbers. Does she go right or left? Left. Okay, so those are the even numbered rooms. So it could be, you know, 410, 412, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So she made a left, good, left. Okay, and which, which room does she stop at? Which even numbered room? 14. So it's room 414, okay, so that's good. Uh, and now have her imagine opening the door to room 414. And when the door opens, there's a very handsome silver haired gentleman Who, who, who hands her, uh, who fans out a deck of cards to her, and she picks one of the cards out. Which card does she pick out? Two of hearts. Two of hearts, excellent. Okay, and then have her return that card to the deck, but accidentally she puts the card back in upside down. Has she done that? Okay, She's done that. beautiful. Um, and now, now uh, tell her that you are going to come to the front of the room. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. And stand right over here next to me. And uh, tell her that, uh, that, that I am reaching in. Oh, by the way, tell her that the same handsome silver-haired gentleman <laughs> is right here with you. She heard it. You heard that. Okay. And that, um, that he's reaching into his pocket and he's pulling out a zippered key case. You tell her that. Okay. He's got a little leather thingy with a zippered key case. Okay. And then I'm opening it. I can't and wait to see what this is. Okay. And I'm pulling out a key. All right. And t tell her what, what's, the, what's inscribed on the key. What, 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 uh, what I don't have glasses. Oh, okay. I can't see that. So it says, it says Hillman. Oh, yeah. So it could have been Farragut, but she yeah, picked Hillman. And that's the only key in here. Picked Hillman. But the weirdest part is what's inscribed on the back of the key? What room number? Yeah, he did it. What does it say? 414. <laughs> have a seat. Thank you very much. I'm going to end my, uh, our time together today by trying to memorize the order of, of all 52 cards in the deck.
Okay. I'm going to try to do that fairly quickly. So I'm going to ask somebody to count to 10. I'm going to look through the cards. I'm going to try to memorize the order of all 52 cards. And then I will recite them to you. And then you'll burst into thunderous applause. And we'll be done. <laughs> that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So and you can watch with me as I go through this. I'm just going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start looking through them. Somebody count to 10. One. And, oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Look. Three. Wait, wait. There's an upside down card in the middle of the deck. What was? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, who's counting for me? Okay, here we go. Start now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Jack of spades. King of clubs. Five of clubs. Two of hearts. Nine of spades. Ace of spades, three of hearts, six of clubs, eight of diamonds, eight of clubs. Ace of clubs. Ten of spades, five of hearts, uh, two of diamonds, king of diamonds. Seven of diamonds, eight of clubs, three of spades? Yeah. Ace of diamonds, seven of spades, five of spades, queen of diamonds, I believe. Ace of hearts, eight of spades, uh, three of diamonds? Seven of hearts, queen of hearts, five of diamonds, seven of clubs, four of hearts? King of hearts, four of diamonds, ten of diamonds. Jack of clubs, jack of hearts, ten of clubs. I cheated on that one. Jack of diamonds, uh, four of spades, ten of hearts, six of hearts, three of clubs, two of spades, nine of hearts. King of spades, six of spades, four of clubs, eight of hearts, nine of clubs. Queen of spades, six of diamonds. Queen of clubs, two of clubs, and nine of diamonds. Thank you. Thank you all so very much for your time. Make it a wonderful day and enjoy. Thanks so much.